a little up close better to see how I remove their area. Again, if you ever used one of the torque wrench before, I mean the impact wrench, you just make sure you hit the reverse button. It's going backwards, and then you're just gonna use a 17 millimeter socket, and here we go. We're gonna set it aside, and there you go. It comes right off. So we're, we already removed the variator, now we gotta remove our clutch. Uh, CBT clutch, here we go. See how it comes off? You don't have to have anything to hold or press on it, because now you can actually remove it. And now there's our clutch right there, our clutch shoe. And so we're just going to go ahead and spin the belt off. It's spinning freely because there's nothing, no back wheel holding it down. So we got that part. And we want to carefully remove pretty much our gasket, our CVT gasket. Again, these can be reusable uh, most of the time if uh, it hasn't been worn out because there's no fluid. This is just protected from dust. I don't recommend putting any kind of gasket seal on this because you'll take it off from time to time to change your, some of your variator uh, roller weights if you're going to play with performance or even just change your uh, clutch system springs as well. So this one has a little bit of uh, the doll pins uh, come out to it. So we're going to go ahead, take that off. We're going to get off because we need to get this off to get to our transmission here. And our transmission, again, remember what we did here? We poked the holes on I pre-poked the holes for you. Um, the drain hole is a 10 millimeter, which we don't have to remove it. All we have to remove is all these, uh, the rest of the uh, six, uh, eight millimeters that's holding the uh, transmission gasket. So here we go. I'm going to go remove it. You can see here. It's coming on quite nicely. Okay, that's our first one. So we're going to go ahead and put it into our first available slot here and we're going to get our second one, our transmission one. There we go. We'll make sure you put it in the slot right away so you won't forget because they are different length just like our CVT cover. So there we go. Now we got two more here at this angle here. Again, these are pre-loosened and also the oil has been drained out, the transmission oil. So that's why uh, you, won't, you won't see much of a mildew or residue because we cleaned it previously. And they're also pre-torqued and normally uh, we put uh, some um, blue Loctite on it. But again, we're going to save this one right here, the seventh one for the drain one, uh, which we don't have to remove for this case. Okay. And then we have... This one right here, this one's located on the bottom. And we also made a little indent too on the bottom as well, just to help us reference better. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, here it goes, the last one. There you can see right there. It's good that it's inclined a little bit because we don't want any of the gears to pop out. And now you can actually take it off again. The drain bolt's still intact right here. So there we go. So you get to remove it right out. So you can see there. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to change out some of the bearings. The tater bearings is going to say TPL on there, not this one. See, this is the original stock one that's on there right now. It's fairly good. It's still in good condition. But we're going to go ahead and improve it. We're also going to get some high-performance seal. Uh, replace all the seal with some blue ones as well for the one ACC. So we'll, we re, we're going to reuse this uh, transmission cover as well as the gear. This one actually came out already. So this is how the bearings look like right there. So this one's not the Tata brand, but it also has numbers on there to indicate uh, which bearing set we have. So then they go like this. Once they go in, they're hard to get out, by the way. And that's why we heat these up and then we cool the bearings down. So again, heat will cause the aluminum to expand and the, the cold, the freezing of the bearings will call it, cause it to contract. So when it does that, it makes it easier for us to put things in. And when you actually get a gear set, it usually comes with this piece right here. This is a gear set. Uh, this is an NCY one, uh, which we already upgraded. But I want to show you how we put it in. It's the NCY right here. It's number 37 by 15. So that means this is the 15 teeth right here. So you'll need a comp almost like a, a 12 ton to actually get the OEM one off. So you're going to reuse this one right here, this this whole gear, but not the shaft with the teeth. This is the one that comes in, usually they sell them by this set alone, the shaft and this one set. And this is your OEM, which you'll need like a 12 ton compression in order to get off. Also, get put this one back on. So put the new one back on. So put the new shaft anyway on. So you'll see the difference in just a few. So we got that off now, and we want to carefully 
uh, get our gasket here. And normally these are worn out. If there was fluid in here, we wouldn't reuse this one. Uh, this one you can actually go ahead and put a gasket sealer, like a spray on. I recommend just get like some like um, copper spray and spray the gasket really well before you install uh, a new um, seal. So there we go. And then this shaft here comes off. We're gonna go and replace also the bearings here, you can see. And then we're also gonna replace the shaft as well. Uh, not the shaft, this one's we're gonna reuse, but we're gonna place the sealant as well on that one. So that's pretty much how we can remove it. The only thing we're gonna savage from this part here, we're gonna go and replace with a new uh, CBT uh, tr uh, transmission kit. We're gonna go ahead and just keep the Kickstarter because there's no high performance Kickstarter. Kickstarter is just pretty much the same as it is here. So then, then we're gonna go ahead and change the variators to some Dr. Pulley rollers. Uh, you can see here, I'm gonna take it off. Hopefully that, the rollers are intact. That's how it looks like right here. So these are just the regular rollers. You can see they're pretty worn out. They've developed flat spot. That lens you need to have to change them out. This one's a good indicator right here. So you can see that flat spot. So that's one's gonna be changed out. So that's pretty much how you remove the CV2 cover as well as the transmission uh, cover. Uh, keep intact if you can. Uh, all the dowel pins area. So you can see here, we got one dowel pin here. We're probably missing another one here. There it goes, it's rolled out bias. You can see only dowel pins can fit in certain slots. They can't, they can't just fit on any hole. See dowel pins right here? They can only fit in certain slots and they can't just fit on any hole. So in order to remove this kind of bearing set here, you, what you'll need is actually what's called like a, a slide hammer bearing puller. And um, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Um, this is what they look like. They come in a set like this, and you can remove the bearing easily with them. What they do is they come in with some kind of like an open lip that you can actually expand and further. And you just find the, find the lip that's right, and then when you bolt it in, it expands the lip so that little lip part right here hooks onto the bearings to pull it out. Like for instance, let's say we're going to pull out this one right here that's already pretty popped out a little bit. See, I can't just basically get out just like that. So what it is is the lips will expand and once it expands there's a hammer that attaches to her which I'll show you these are said to show and not show there we go okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the, the hammer here try to get from this side so you can see it from this angle okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this much as I can so it'll look over it so you, so you can see the lips starting to expand as I'm screwing this in there we go Okay, see, it expands too much, I can't fit it back in. So you wanna do is you wanna expand it when it's in there. I just wanna open it, show you what it does. Okay, so now I'm gonna expand it in there. And then what you're gonna do is, it has a hammer here. A hammer that attaches to the upper top. You can see here, it screws on right here. Now this is, if it was really hard to pull out, you would need this. But sometimes you could probably either do it by hand. So you'll screw this in. See if I can do that. Okay, and this whole thing is like a force to be reckoned with. I wanted to say that, but you don't have to say that. Okay, here it goes. So now I got the hammer here, and you can watch. Uh, well, sometimes you have to hold it, but we'll see. See? And that's how it usually will pop it out by a little bit of force. But this is already pretty loosened, so it was like an easy kill. But you can see how the lip actually holds it in place right there. So we're gonna do that for all the rest of them including the small one right here. And the small one's gonna take a little smaller one. So there's there, there's a smaller one there. So you can see when this wasn't pretty loose. So normally you would heat this first uh, in order to get this to expand. But just for demo reasons, I'm gonna try to see if I can go ahead and set this up. Well, hopefully get focus here. And just use this one right now. That way you can see it. So we're gonna unloosen it get the mouth back to close or the lip to shut shut in a little bit before we put it in there see if it fits okay it fits now so we're gonna go and get ready to expand a little bit still fits you want to get in snugly where it doesn't fit no more then that's when you start doing some really twirl okay there we go all right so we're gonna go ahead and expand it we want to make sure we expand it really good Okay, and then they have numbers in them, so you can't cross-reference them uh, differently, and they only fit a certain uh, slot, so you can't really have to worry about it. So 
and take them off, of course, you reverse everything. Pretty much close the lip a little bit. That way it slides right off. There you go. That was for the medium size one. So it's different sizes for different ones. You could probably use the medium one as well for this one, but I prefer to use the right one. Okay, so you go ahead and give it a good screw in there. And what I'm doing is screwing the hammer side here. I'm screwing it and tying it into the full unit here, the receptor. Okay. Okay. All right, so here we go. I mean, what I'm gonna do is just swing this hammer here. I'm gonna go backwards so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So this is how you pretty much use this uh, sliding tool to hammer it in. Let me try to get an angle for you so you can see the whole thing in action. Okay, so here we go. You'll see it here. I'm gonna go and hammer it out. There you go, see how easy that was? It just came right out. It didn't damage the thing. What a lot of people do is they try to pretty much pick on it and that, you know, when you pick on aluminum, you're eventually gonna shave off something or even puncture something and you don't want that. These ball bearings are supposed to be left really smooth and intact. So if you have a hard time, just get one of these puller remover here. Again, it saves the job so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next one here. And this one here, this last one, you can actually almost hammer it out uh, from the shaft. So let's see if we can do that. Let me get this off real quick. And we're gonna take a, a pie of maybe a, uh, a hammer to this one right here. That way come out. You could probably even do it in the bottom. Let's see, ready? One to tap it. One, two, three. There you go, see? Just tap right out. I'm not sure you caught seen that. I just tapped it, but it was it was in like this. And all I did was just tap it a little bit. One, two, three. And sometimes you will need to use a hammer on it. And be careful, again, the seals here, we're gonna replace anyway though. And there's also another tool to replace the seal as well. Uh, it doesn't just come off easily by pulling it. You know, you can't really just pull it. And there's also a spring that you can damage. See that small spring there? Now it's coming off. And that's the spring right there that you, you don't wanna damage it. You wanna pull the whole thing out with the spring on intact. So let me go and put the spring back on. Okay, so a little tricky here. You gotta stretch it. There we go. You can hear it snap back in. Okay, so now there's also a tool to remove, um, um, what do you call that, the sealer as well. So the sealer one, you're gonna use this one tool right here. Okay, as far as taking down to the sealer remover, you can buy one of these right here, sealer driver. Uh, or if you don't have a sealer driver, you can just use it like a maybe even a PCP pipe or a socket. So let me see if I have a socket that might even fit this uh, a little bit better. So sometimes your existing socket would work just fine. So you have this here. Again, you want to make sure it goes into the groove, not outside of it. So this one's a little bit too big. So, and that's why the sealer driver does the tool for it here. It just has it where you can actually just screw a certain plastic size and it won't uh, puncture it. But this one's too big. And so what we're gonna do is try to find a smaller one. So we're gonna go unscrew this one, get a smaller one in place. And this is how we remove the sealer. Here we go. So we're just gonna take the cover side right now. The transmission cover, okay. So we removed it. There's a screw there that holds it on. We're gonna go ahead and try to replace it. And we're gonna see if this is a smaller one that might fit it. And it actually might. This smaller one might work. This is right here. So you can see it still has a little room for it to wiggle out, so that's good. So we're gonna go and use this smaller one here. So we're gonna do is screw it intact. It's called number four, they do have numbers on them. It looks like a seven at first, but it's number four with the light reflecting. Okay, so we're gonna screw this one back in. And you can see a flush edge, and you can see a flat, sharp edge. You want the flush edge uh, facing you, uh, or facing outward, because we don't want it to um, uh, dig in. Okay, so there we go. Got that in there. We can go from this side. That way it protects the springs. And let's see here. You're gonna get a surface to work with. We're gonna go from this side. Okay, and you're gonna take a little, probably a mallet hammer if you have one. You know, I got one right here, you can use. So what you wanna do is you wanna lay it on there, kind of flush a little bit. And we're gonna see about, go ahead and give it a little tap. 
I'm going to go ahead and try to get the resolution a little bit better for you. Okay, here we go. And we're going to go and remove the seal. You can see there, I'm trying to make sure that it's not forcing it. Okay, it's coming off. You can see here, a little indentation I just did. And again, I keep on working at it. Try to make sure we uh, gap it. Okay, so it's coming off. Careful when you're working with aluminum. You don't want to put too much pressure on it. Again, it's almost coming off. Then the other side, there we go. You can see that, it just popped right off. There we go, that's the seal. And you can see here it's not damaged. And that's what you want. You want pretty much, uh, if you were to force you know, anything metal on this, just make sure it's flush and covers this whole part. Because if you only got in the, if you only got it right here in the middle, it will cause it to rip almost the center right off. So you want to keep it intact in case you ever need to back up and use this again, you'll have it. So that's it. That's how you remove a seal and we got our cover all set up. And we're going to keep this right here at temperature right now. Uh, like I said, it's very hot here in California. So we're going to go and continue this uh, uh, video next, um, next one. And while we're going to heat this up by the natural sun, it gets about 110 degrees here sometimes in California. And that's enough to expand aluminum. And you can see here, uh, we already have a few set up to be able to do that. So let me go and show you. Here we go. There's our compressor tool here. We use a 12 ton compressor tool to get the gears. And these are the ones we set out here. This is our expansion for our 180cc. We have set out in the sunlight just to go and have it heat up. And we frozen uh, pretty much the crankshaft. I mean, yeah, the crankshaft as well as the other ones to prepare it for our, uh, you can see here, past the ice cream. <laughs> there's a go. We froze in the uh, bearings and these are left for, you can probably put them in, you know, depending on how good your freezes are, probably just a couple hours or so, but you can just leave it sometimes for about six or seven hours uh, or even overnight whenever you get a chance to, when you're going to work on it, keep it cold the better. That way it contracts. Also, you can spray some WD-40 ahead of time on it just to make sure it doesn't rust in the process of being frozen. And then we'll get back to it and we'll start uh, next time when the sun uh, goes back up to heat up this but now that we gotten this far apart it should be pretty much uh, uh, getting all the bearings out from the old one again we're going to use our pretty much our sliding hammer puller for the bearings and then our different sizes of uh, steel driver kit remover for our different sizes that we have see we have a larger one and then the one we were using is the smallest one they had so number four this is a number seven, and this big one is a number, I believe if it's not upside down, it's number nine. And then we also have a number five. So those are pretty much the, the sets that we're gonna need to actually pull out all the seals as well. And then also I'll show you a tool that removes this right here. This kicks uh, starter gear, which is very hard to remove physically by hand or even with a a kind of a unique clamp you'll need one of these uh, pullers to actually remove the puller set so this is what we use to remove the puller set uh, for the kickstarter gear it's this tool right here which we customize a little bit to help so that's it that's in our next video we'll show you how to remove everything and replace it